but it's a test run. Um, I'm just trying to see how this is going to work out, how much pressure I need to give it. You can see the sand moving there. She got some good movement there. So what I did was I ran a T valve here and just released some of the pressure there. Uh, none of this has been welded in yet. It's just all pushed together because I want to make sure everything's good. The only thing I welded so far was the top. Um, I do have two outlets on this it's because this design came like that. And so far, the flow looks pretty good. Let a lot of this fine sand settle. And then I can make an accurate determination uh, if I need to give it more or less pressure. So if I open it up all the way, I'll lose less pressure here and I'll get less here. But if I tighten it, I can raise the flow rate, increase the sand height. The idea is to try to keep your sand at a minimum right around this area and not let it get into the outtake. So you want your sand to stay anywhere as long as it doesn't come out. And uh, so take a little trial there. I gotta let the sand settle in, cycle a little bit, and then uh, we'll take it from there. If this prototype works well, then I will uh, make a second one. So, I'll keep you guys posted. All right, guys, welcome back. Oh, uh, all right, so I made a second one now. Uh, sort of letting it cycle a little bit. I had to do some tweaking a bit. I tried to run them together. A friend recommended me to try running them both together since I do have uh, access pressure I need to relieve. But when I synced them together with one pump, uh, it, it wasn't it wasn't setting out right on the second uh, sand filter, so uh, it was just better to have two individual pumps, small pumps. It could have worked possibly if I had fine tuned it with a separate, the uh, uh, maybe a separate lever on top of this one. But there was so much pressure coming out of here and being held back, even though this was completely open on both sides from one to the other. Uh, it just couldn't I couldn't I couldn't tune it exactly right, and everything was sort of blowing out of here and coming into this one so uh this the flows were not even and as you can see now um they're doing pretty well so uh nothing yet has been glued or uh, welded together this is just all uh push pipe pushing it together until i make sure everything's going to run smooth this is all uh getting ready for the final stages um I plan to put this under the sump, but at the same time, I'm also redoing the sump. So there's a lot of projects I'm trying to tackle at once. Uh, it's a big scope of things. But yep, yeah, um, everything seems to be working pretty well. And as I stated before, these uh, these valves here are just pressure valves so that I can relieve, release some of the uh, pressure that's coming from the pump that might be too strenuous to put on here and blast all the sand around. Because uh, if I tighten it, and I'll show you guys again, just a little tight and we'll start to raise it. You see it don't go all the way up, but my plan is to let the dust settle, let the sand settle a bit, and uh, keep the uh, sand on the bottom. So let all, the, let all that sand sort of get heavy from uh, being in the water. And, uh, yeah, that's the plan, guys. So, anyway, let me get back to this, and I will keep you guys posted. So, this is day three now. Um, later on in the afternoon or early evening today, I did a few water changes, too. I also had to change my sand, because the sand that I was using uh, was a lighter... A lighter grain 
much smaller and it was just it was everywhere so I went back to the heavier sand that I have in my tank and um, I can't add as much because when I power it it's just so heavy it's hard to move it so I had to take uh, use less sand for this application because this sand like I said is a little heavier but the flow is pretty good um, I'm just gonna keep it at this level I'm still trying to clear the water and uh, it's taking a little longer than I thought so um, I'm gonna let this run hopefully We'll have some better results tomorrow um, this was already cycled sand that was in my tank and I'm still getting a cloudiness maybe it's just this constant uh, power whipping it around <laughs> that's just making it really uh, turn the water a little milky so you know, I'm not sure yet what's causing it so let's just hope that this works and tomorrow I won't see cloudy water and if I do, I may not use this application in my sump. So that's where I'm at, guys. And uh, we'll see what happens tomorrow. So, all right, guys. <clears throat> all right, so this is uh, how it's going so far, and I'm very pleased with it. Um, this is the third sand I am trying uh, and I kind of like the reaction and the way that this sand grain behaves better than the other two I've used. Uh, pretty good stuff. It's made specifically for uh, fluidized bed filters so uh, makes a lot of sense why this moves so much more fluidly than the, uh, the other two versions I used. One was a little too heavy and the other one was just a little too light. So this is a mixture of both. You can see I'm really getting some good movement there. So I'm going to let this run for a couple days. And we should be ready to go ahead and put this in. But uh, this product right here I researched and the lifeguard, you know, it's sand will fluidize in a, in a container that you put in but uh, the way that this reacts is so much better and the movement is such so much more natural and uh, I didn't even pre-rinse this stuff and <laughs> it's very 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 uh, better than the other two versions I use so I am very happy with it so now it's just a waiting game and let these guys start to cycle a little bit before I add them to my filtration. So that's where I'm at, guys. Just a lot of trial and error here, but uh, I think I'm gonna keep this sand and go with this sand instead. So let's just follow up in a couple of days and see how this is doing. Okay, another day of rain, and today I came to check on it. It looks very good. Water is not too bad. Water is nice and clear. So you can tell immediately that this sand right here adapted very well and quickly adjusted to good fluidization. I didn't even have to pre rinse uh, this sand right here, and it worked really well. These are the three sands that I use. The first time I, as you guys saw, my first day of using it, I used this sand right here, and this is the uh, uh, Genuine Marine Argonite. Um, it's good sand, but for what I was trying to do, uh, it just had too much movement to it, so um, it was too much sand coming out of it. Even as I adjusted the flow, it was just, it's just too light and too fluffy, so I then tried using the sand from my tank. This is the, uh, Geographic, uh, natural, all white, and um, the stuff worked really well. Um, but the only problem is, even with the diverter all the way up, and I gave it full power to the fluidization, 
it was just much too heavy to really move it and I didn't get a, a good height on it so I couldn't adjust the height it was just one height steady there no matter how many how much power I gave it so um, I tried another sand and this sand right here made by lifeguard is particularly made for this situation fluidization so day two looks just like this and I don't have to do any water change or anything I mean I know it's raining but <laughs> They contribute that much to it. This is amazing stuff right here. You can see the fluidization is very nice. So yes, I can probably move on now to making uh, my goals to go ahead and put this in my filtration now and uh, figure out how I'm going to connect all my output lines on this now and get this going. So, all right, guys. All right, another beautiful day today, no rain. And I went to check on these guys and I'm very pleased with what I see. I have a little bit of sand coming out, but overall, I'm very pleased with what I see. So, after trying the three types of sand, this is the sand that works best for me. Let me get to the back so you guys can see that. It's pretty good clarity in this water. Of course, you know, all of this will be silenced. This is just all running everything without any glue, like I've told you guys before. Nothing's been PVC glued or nothing. This is just hand tied together. It's, you know, got a little lease, but um, yeah, look at that. It's amazing. It really is. So I'm in the process of making a. Uh, a sand trap so to speak um, with the PVC pipe I would include that in, in this uh, setup that I'm doing this video that I'm gonna be making for this um, so the idea is if any sand does decide to come out and you know in my sump I don't want that so I'm gonna build a, uh, a DIY sand catcher or any debris catcher for that matter but um, and it's almost done it's taking a little bit of uh, back and forth some obstacles I have to overcome but I am super pleased with this sand right here and this is what I will be using in my sub so I need another day guys to let the uh, solvent cure on the sand catcher I'm making and I guess maybe tomorrow we can go ahead and set all this up and get things rolling long overdue so that's where I'm at guys and we'll see what happens next so the sand filters are in now and I have both of them hooked up and I went as so far as to make a sand trap, so to speak. The idea is that as these filters are running, sometimes sand will come out on the output of these uh, filters here. These are the output lines. So there's one here and there's one in the back on each. So essentially each filter has two lines that run out. Once the sand rises, uh, of course, all the water that's being ejected in forces the sand to be disturbed, a fluidization, and water will rise and it'll escape out of the two outlets here. So what I did was I ran hoses all the way down and I ran them into my uh, DIY uh, sand catcher, you want to call it. Uh, anything that's any fine particles that I don't want embedded in my floor here um, They will definitely be caught in there and that's how they're both hooked up So basically like in the photos I showed you I Took it and I angled them downward in an angle both of them the same with these they're coming in here But I heated them and I angled them down 
So what's happening, the water is coming in and it's being shot a centrifugal force inside of it with the water coming this way and this water going that way because this these two lines are hooked up to this side so both uh, <clears throat> outputs are coming out of the sand filters being pushed in here and I can take this off and show you and you can see it's just siphoning back to the top with the water, if the angles of the uh, output hoses I have and those 90s at an angle, it's creating a vortex whirlwind. And you can see what's happening is, remember earlier I put a plastic funnel in here. So as the water is spinning around in here, uh, all the sand is being collected to the bottom. And I've got this bottom plate that I can take off and remove the sand. So if there is any fine particles or any sand or, or anything that's in here, it will be make its way in here, it will get swirled around and then it will get caught into a funnel where it will just stay down there and then of course the water will rise and just the clean water will make it a pot. Pretty good movement there. And the sand can't make it this high up so it will collect on the bottom. And it just comes right off. I didn't uh, weld the bottom because if I need to get in there, I want to be able to take it off. So what I did use was plumber's tape, I wrapped it about three times and then put the cap on there and it made a watertight seal so I can remove it. As far as the output lines, this is where I have the water diverting to. The bigger line is a diversion uh, from both of the pumps so that I am not sending all the power directly into the sand filters I'm diverting the water and I have a ball valve on each pump and that water is being sent out here so we got the two little lines here and those are from each of the sand filters and the bigger line, of course, is where your overflow is coming in off the DIY uh, Vortex sand collector. And it's being fed down, and it comes right into there. So, there you have my filtration. A recap on it. I just have my drainage feeding into this one. It passes through these sponge blocks here, and then I have my bio wheel with more drainage going in here, which gets filtered out, making its way to the bio wheel. I then have another sponge check with two sponges here. And then I have my final two sponge, finer sponge check blocks. So as all this water is being passed through, these pumps are picking up the water and filtering them out with the fluidization and then the water I'm sending it back all the way over here to the previous chamber to get sent back and recycled again so this is the uh, idea to try to keep my water crystal clear and if I could keep my sump crystal clear then I could ensure that my tank will stay clear as well so yeah that's it guys um, that's it for the fluidization build they, they react a little different these pumps are pretty old they were just some of these uh, fountain pumps that I had in my shed probably need to get some new ones to replace them but for checking purposes I was able to make sure everything runs pretty smooth This is beautiful fluidization going on. Look at that. I will tighten the valves a little more later. Get it to go a little higher, but for now I'm just going to let them settle. And uh, we'll see how it goes. So yeah. The DIY sand filters was a success. 
Big thanks to my friend Mike for suggestions on the uh, idea of collecting sand with a DIY container of some sort. So yeah, that was a big help there. And yeah, that's it guys. DIY sand filter.